Hello folks, this is Harley and I'm going to take you for a spin around the basic appearance and features of Libre Health EHR, which just for brevity I'll be calling Libre. Let's start here at the opening login screen. One bit of useful information is found right here, your Libre instances version number, and that can be a good thing to know. And you can change Libre's display language here. A lot of languages. Although I'm just going to go with the default standard English. I'm logging in as an administrator. So we'll be allowed to see all of Libre's features. In real life, each user's access permissions determine what they can and can't see. Enter your login and click login. Now please note that any patient or staff names or data you may see here are completely fictional. Right, here we have the main functional areas of the screen. We have the main menu along the top, and each menu item is the name of a menu group. The header area in which the active patient's information is displayed when their record is being worked on. The module panels present the controls with which you work with the EHR's different functions. And each panel's tab has its controls on them. Libre starts with two panels, and each user has some choice of which ones appear for them. The number of tabs you see will change as you open and close modules. Let's use the authorization group to look at one of Libre's interesting interface behaviors. This at the top right is the authorization group. When you select a menu item that opens a new panel, it is added to the right of the display. If you select another one from the same menu group, it takes over the tab of the previous item from that group. If you have multiple tabs open, let's open the flow board and patient client finder. Some of the panels are wider than their portion of the display. So you have the scroll bar at the bottom so that you can slide it and see the whole panel. But now let's zoom in here so we can take a look at the little icons on the tabs. The first one on the right is the close icon, which does just that, closes the tab. Then there's a lock icon, which can be thought of as minimizing the tab. Then with the left icon, you can refresh the contents of the tab, which we'll see more of in other videos. Note that if you close a tab before you save the work you did on it, that work will be lost. Okay, let's move on to look at the main menu in more detail. Close a couple of these tabs. To get a better idea of Libre's modules and capabilities, the instructions on how to configure and use these modules will be available in focused tutorials as videos or written documentation. These menu items give access to the modules that provide the functionality for Libre Health EHR. At top right, we have that authorization group that we looked at. It shows who is logged in and these other activities. Let's look at the preferences. Here you can change these things about your own account without affecting other users' displays. You can set your own first and second startup tabs. You can choose what elements you want in your main menu, depending on the work you do. You can change your own theme and more. This column indicates what the defaults are for your role. This is for an administrator, which I'm logged in as, and the checked items are set to the defaults. 
The other tabs here have more settings for your personal preferences. We have locale, uh, which has units of measure and date formats. You can set your own report parameters depending on the kind of work you do. And here's your own calendar settings. Remember, you must hit save to preserve any changes. And also, you will need to log out and back in to see any of these user preference changes. The other item in this group is where you can change your passphrase. And there you see it again. The passphrase is from the same menu group as the user preferences, so it just used the same tab as we already had showing. So I say again, that behavior of the interface is why you need to get into the habit of hitting save every time you finish doing something in a module. Now to the first menu item at top left, that's the calendar. It is just what it says. It shows the facilities patient appointment schedule. Your colors may vary. Any user whose profile has the calendar checkbox selected in their user profile will appear on the calendar. You can select the date to view either with the date picker calendar widget where you advance the months, select the year, okay, back off the month, select the date, or with these controls. You bring it automatically to today, next day, previous day, or back to today rather. If your Libre install supports more than one facility, you can select which schedule you're looking at. With this facilities, let's look at the other f clinic and the providers who are assigned to that facility will appear in the schedule. Let's go back to look at all facilities and all users. Up here at the top right of the calendar are the types of calendar displays. The default is the agenda view showing the patient appointments for all providers for that day. You can change it to a high level view of the day the week or the month. If you have a listing of multiple providers, you can show the schedule for all of them as we have here, or just a specific one by clicking on their name. And let's go back to the agenda view for today. We see here that Dr. Newman's calendar has been configured with his personal calendar time block categories, his in and out of office times, his lunch, and customized time block types can be created also. Here Dr. Newman has an immunization clinic. The next menu item is the flow board. Let's close the calendar. This is a very useful method of tracking the current status of every patient's progress through their appointment. The status of the patient's encounter or appointment or visit is updated as they progress through it. The different data about the status can be seen in these columns. The Flowboard module monitors the time each patient spends in each status to use in report generation and clinic performance analysis. Next menu item, Messages. This is the module with which the practice staff communicates non-clinical information with each other. In American law, these messages are not legally part of the patient's confidential medical records, but that may not be the case where you are. Here you can create a message add new about a specific topic and note that this is a note about a chart note it is not the chart note itself for a particular patient let's use Anita this is a new message uh, and 
send it to a specific user. I'm going to send it to myself so we can see it in this demo. There's the message and send it off. When the recipient logs into Libre, as I am right now, they see the message in their reminder center. They read the message, which is right here. They can respond to it. Change the status, for example, forward it to another user. And I'm going to send it to myself so we can see it again. And send it on. And there's the forwarded message. In this way, all users of this system can exchange practice information with each other. Let's see, patient, client. This menu group contains the various modules that relate to individual patients. The finder is a search tool with customizable column headings, which are search terms. Let's just pull up a patient who will be displayed in some of the modules we're going to be looking at. Now, Anita. A new tab opens with the patient's summary screen and her identifiers listed at the top left as the current patient and at top right we have the patient's encounter or visit list. Okay, and back to the patient client menu item, add new search. This is where a new patient is added to the system. You fill in the red required fields and open up more, more data entry groups as you go. And when you're done, you click create new patient. This module can also be used as a search tool with some of the different data fields as search terms. Okay, the summary is a way of pulling back up the summary, patient summary, if you've, if you've uh, closed it. Visits duplicates the function of that current, the uh, selected encounter panel over here to the right. Records is just a way to track patient record requests from outside uh, resources. Visit forms uh, will add a clinical form to the documents of an open encounter and the input lets you add a new patient to the database by an external data transfer. Next menu item is fees. This is where the various finance related functions are found. The fee sheet pulls up the form which we must select an active encounter to do this. So let's pull up this one. Fee sheet pulls up the form where the diagnoses and services rendered for the current visit are recorded. Payment is where you take a payment on a patient's account. Checkout is where you take a payment and print a receipt for just this visit and this option is best suited for cash-based practices. Billing. This is the entry point to the billing manager where accounts receivable are processed, paper claim documents can be printed, and X12 files generated for electronic billing. Posting. Where individual EOB payments are logged, and batch payments are for entering batch EFTs and ERAs. Next we have the procedures menu item. This is the access point to the modules that order diagnostic procedures and manage their results. Libre does not come with them pre-configured because many practices manage them externally. The administration menu item contains the main system configuration modules of Libre. Very few of these items can be accessed by any users besides an administrator. Actual use of these menu and submenu items are covered in the tutorials of the specific modules. Globals are the system configuration settings such as the different modules default behaviors 
the display formats for the practices location, which Libre capabilities are enabled, etc. The edit menu is a tool to modify this main menu. Facilities enter the information about the facilities that this Libre install supports. Users, here you manage the user's profiles who are authorized to use this EHR. The address book contains contact information of all the providers, external agencies, and other professionals that this facility interacts with. And practice is where you register the pharmacies, insurance companies, and clearing houses this practice interacts with. And you can also configure the document storage repository structure. Codes is where you create custom service codes to enhance service code entry into the fee sheet. Layouts, lists, ACLs, files, and backup are deep system administration functions. Rules, alerts, patient reminders all apply to the patient reminders and clinical decision rules functionalities. Other is even more system maintenance items. Tags, patients, tags, filters are all part of the amazing record tagging and filtering system that help organize patient records in customized grouping. And that's the administration tab. And here we have reports. These are all the different pre-made practice and patient reports. Each report type has a submenu of the specific reports available of that type. Miscellaneous is odds and ends that didn't fit elsewhere, and you'll find a lot of the other menu items duplicated here. Pop-ups is an oddly named collection of one-click access to different forms and documents. QA measures are quality assurance activities. Help we have a button to open the online user manual and a button that takes you to the Libre EHR user forum for no cost online support to consult with the Libre project developers and other users and the acknowledgement screen where you can peruse various kinds of information on the Libre EHR project and that's a quick run through of the main menu. Detailed documentation is available online in written how-to's and other instructional documents and also from videos in this LibreHealth YouTube channel. And this completes the overview of LibreHealth EHR. Come check out the LibreHealth community at the URL given in this YouTube video's description. See you online!